My name is Pratik Naik, and I've been working as an industry retoucher for the last 10 years. The biggest problem that I've seen people face with post-production is actually color toning. I found that color toning, or color grading, whatever you want to call it, it can be really difficult. For example, if you're like me, you usually don't know what direction you want to go in. Even when you find out what direction you want to go in, you have to know how to apply it, and that alone has its own set of challenges. Infinite Color simplifies that entire process, does it fast, and with professional grade results. Before I show you how it works, I want to tell you a little bit about what it is. I wanted to develop a tool that explores the infinite color potential of each image, so I collaborated with Connie Wallstrom, who's a genius at coding. We brought this to life, and we also made sure that the parameters of each adjustment layer that this creates works cohesively together, so the results are actually really pleasing. I've ensured firsthand that the potential of colors replicates a rich and usable color palette. Once it came to life, I reached out to professional photographers in each genre and asked them to see if they could create intricate colors that complemented their work and vision just by using this tool. The images you see before you were created with this tool, and pleasingly, they were able to use it to effectively color tone their images in a way that was true to them, no matter how picky they were, and no matter how varied their tastes. People don't always know what they want, but they'll know what they love when they see it. Infinite Color provides a solution of connecting your vision to the color possibilities of each image. This tool steers you into finding the look that is unique to your taste, that is logical and done in a step-by-step -step method. In the process, I think it will definitely open your mind into discovering a direction that you might have ever imagined in your work. Now let's take a look at exactly how this tool works. Now the panel itself, no matter what you use, has a really interesting layout. It's simple, it's clean, but more importantly, it's really powerful. This is an image that was shot by Bella Kotak, who lent me this image to demonstrate with. Over here on the right side where we have our layers, I have a look that I generated with this panel. It's advanced, it's clean, it's beautiful, it's intricate, it builds up. And I wanna show you how I create something really similarly in a couple of minutes. And I think that's the biggest power, biggest point about this program or this extension, I should say, is that it truly is extremely powerful, it's easy to use, and I can create something really beautiful with it. So I'm gonna delete this group for a moment. And here on the actual panel itself, I wanna talk about it. The create button is gonna actually randomize these five different adjustment layers. But most importantly, these five different adjustment layers have parameters that I've set and tested over a series of images in different genres so that it looks really clean, it looks beautiful, and it replicates a lot of the color work that I've done on commercial and editorial projects so that it retains a really clean aesthetic about it. Once I hit create, you'll notice that what happens is every single time I use it, it produces a different look that it generates. Now, as I mentioned before about the parameters, if I go through these individual layers here, you'll notice that each of these curves have a cross-process look to them. And what I mean by parameters is that based on how low or high, how high these go and how they interact with these other layers, they're meant to work harmoniously together to create something that's rich, but also really clean. It took a lot of testing because e each of these different outputs and colors can produce dramatically different results based on how far or how less each of them go. So there was a lot of thought that went into them rather than just a randomized set of tones that it creates. Now, you may be asking, what's the point of light if there's medium and intense? Well, light is specifically for images that are more shadow dominant because color tends to pick up a lot easier with shadowy images. Medium, for example, works really well with highlights or images that have a lot more highlights in them just because color is harder to pick up. So I wanted to create something that is usable for everybody because some people might want a more intense look, so I have different variables. But for me, light seems to be something that I stick with for the most part. The other thing that you can do is these groups here have opacities. So if you decide that you want to lower opacity on your group, you can re-roll or recreate and keep that opacity to whatever it is that you set. Another great feature is that, let's say that you actually liked 
something you've done a couple of steps before, a look that it created two steps prior. I can hit step backwards or control option Z and it'll go back to the looks that it created in the past with each step that I do in my history. Typically what happens is with history, if you hit command Z, it's only going to go back one step on your layer palette or whatever it is that you created. So for instance, normally it would just undo adding a color lookup and then undo adding gradient map and so forth and so on. But we've done it in such a way where when we hit command Z and go back in time, it just saves you an entire step by going back to previous looks every time you hit command Z. The point that I'm trying to make is that even if you go too far, you don't have to worry because you can hit command Z once and it goes back to the previous look that you created, which is something really special and I'm proud that we were able to do that. The next thing that I want to mention is that over here on the layer palette, on the actual panel, we can turn off these different adjustment layers that we don't want to use. So for instance, you might want to only use curves and selective color. And if I hit create again, it'll just randomize everything based on those two different adjustment layers. And accordingly, I can build up by adding color balance and then just hit create again. And it creates a more intricate look that way. But more importantly here, we have a shuffle icon. What that shuffle icon does is that, for example, if I want to only reshuffle, perhaps, let's say the curve, I can go over here to my shuffle and hit shuffle on the curve and it's only going to reshuffle the curve itself and nothing else. The other great part about that is if I want a medium intensity on just that layer, I can click medium and then reshuffle the curve. And now the curve will have a lot more dominance. And now it creates something like this, which is a warm, beautiful look that was created with curve set to medium. And I can do the same way for selective color. I can click on selective color and click on medium and then just hit reshuffle. And you can see it's quite intense. So I'm probably not going to do that. Actually, you know what? That looks really good. I like that. So maybe I'm going to drop my opacity a little bit. And actually, let's bring that up here. Go to my curves and drop that down instead. So I can have a better balance in what I want to do. And just like that, I'm able to guide this extension or this panel into something that really brings out my personal preferences. Because as you know, and I say over and over again, people don't necessarily know what they like till they see it. And this kind of helps me figure out different possibilities so I know what direction that I want to go in and just build it off of that. So even though it's randomized, it's randomized in such a way where it presents a bunch of opportunities. You take the one you want and build accordingly. Another great part about that, and speaking of randomizing but still building, is being able to stack different looks. So perhaps with these three layers, we've already created something really intense, but I want to take it further and build accordingly and build off of it. So I'll select my folder here. Maybe I'll drop my opacity down to about 54% or so, because that's a pretty good look. I can rename this to IC1. And the reason I'm renaming it is so that if I hit create again, let's keep, click on light. If I hit create again, it builds on top of it. So you're able to build complexities by adding more adjustment layers and stacking them. And I like that look a lot. I like the way this is going. It's adding that really nice blue to the shadows. And I can rename that again. And then perhaps for the third one, I might just do a gradient map and just top it off that way. Let's see, I want something like this where you can see that the color palette is listed here in the gradient map. And just like that, I'm able to kind of top it up and tweak as I go. Okay, maybe one more. As you can see, it's really easy to get addicted to this because the possibilities just go on forever. And I think that's really beautiful. And of course you have masks. So if you decide that, you know what, this base layer here, I like it for the background, not so much for the skin. I can add a mask and then simply go in and brush away. 
And just like that, I'm able to get a really clean look and I can decide where I want what and guide it accordingly. Let me bring that all together. I'll call this IC3, actually IC4. And now we have a complete different color grade. And naturally, I was just using my eye and personal preference to guide it and let it do everything else for me. This way, you don't have to know how to physically apply looks that you want. You don't even have to know what you want. You let it guide everything for you. And with the power of play, it makes color toning fun again. Now, now that we've gone over the parameters of everything else, let's talk about harmonize. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this for a moment because I don't really need them right now. Harmonize itself is a function that allows me to harmonize the look of this image. If you're familiar with color grading in Capture One, for example, you have the color editor that, or the color balance tool that allows you to color tone your shadows, midtones, and highlights. Well, this is very similar in the sense that it allows you to do that, but as a base, it's gonna present you with an option that it thinks works really well in a triadic color scheme. For example, the harmonize function, when pressed, is going to, first and foremost, pick a highlight color that it feels represents the highlights of the image, which it's reading as blue and is the brightest parts of the image. And then it creates a midtone and shadow color to complement the highlight color. So everything is based off the highlight color of your image. And then it modifies accordingly and creates a harmonious color palette from the shadows and the midtones. This is great to start off with to give you an idea of something that's generally pleasing. And I think that alone is incredible. But even more awesome is that I can now go in here, double click on the shadow color and pick whatever shadow color that I want, just like that. Maybe that looks really good. And I can reselect my midtones by just kind of playing around. And if you're unsure what you want, simply go to, for example, like a color wheel and look at the three different points on the color wheel to see what's equidistant from each other to pick something you like. But me personally, I really love just playing around by moving these colors up and down to see, you know, kind of how they play with each other and build that way. But I think that pink looked really good. And just like that, with Harmonize, I'm able to create something that's easy, that's fun, and it's done really simply. The other great part about this is if you're on Creative Cloud, you can actually save all your layers. So maybe I'm going to go and undo everything and go back to what we did initially over here. I'm going to select Shift and click on all four folders, hit Command G, and now I have my color look. Let's say that we want to save this. I can go into Window, Libraries, and again, this may or may not work depending on the version that you have, and I'm still testing this out, but this is a good example of how to do this. I'm going to drag this color look folder over here. And now it's stuck in my graphics. So what that means is if I delete this folder here, and I want to bring this back in to my layers, I can right click on color look, and I can say place layers. And suddenly I can apply this advanced look really easily on the image and any image that you have open. So that's a fun little tip that I want to mention. And again, if it doesn't work for yours, uh, no problem because I'm going to look into this and make sure it's foolproof for everyone. But I did want to mention it because Creative Cloud uses libraries in order to save your layers. And I think that's a really powerful feature when you combine that with Infinite Color. So that's a look at Infinite Color. I'm so excited to see what you create with this. And if you're ever, so that's a look at infinite color. I'm so excited what you do with this. And if you're looking for other inspiration, go to our website at infinitecolorpanel.com and check out our before and afters videos to see exactly how everybody uses this in terms of weddings, landscapes, beauty, portraits, fashion, newborns, and pretty much every genre. I'm excited because I feel like no matter how intricate or how minimal your preferences are with color toning, 
this tool leverages that and it gets you to where you want to go. I'm excited to see you also join our community. So check out our website and I look forward to seeing you there.